Israeli Minister of Finance, meanwhile, Bezal Smotrich, says Israelis will live in Gaza. He told Israel's army radio, we must encourage the residents of Gaza to emigrate as they live in hardship and poverty. The Israelis want to return to Gaza because it's a beautiful place and they will turn the desert into a prosperous place. Sarah Khaira joins us now from Tel Aviv. Statements like that will only go to confirm and alarm people across the region, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this finance minister is also in charge of the expansion of illegal settlements in occupied West Bank. That was part of the coalition deal when the far-right uh, government was formed uh, about a year ago. Um, this is someone who also comes from a settler background, so he's very much in favour of moving Palestinians out of Gaza and bringing in the Israeli settlers. There used to be Israeli settlements in Gaza up until 2005. But when the Israeli forces that had occupied Gaza withdrew, they also took with them the Israeli settlements and they weren't allowed to stay. Um, this is a concern, especially because um, a few days ago, uh, the war cabinet was looking to decide uh, to talk about, for the first time, uh, what's called the day after, what happens once this war ends. And it was because of Bezlal Smotrich uh, that they had to postpone it until Tuesday. He really kicked up quite the fuss, saying, uh, that that decisions or those discussions shouldn't just be uh, the war cabinet, but it should include himself and it should include also uh, the rest of the security cabinet. And that's why it's been postponed uh, till Tuesday. On the other hand, you also have Benny Gantz, one of the war cabinet members, that has been voicing his thoughts in saying that uh, what is the plan next? Because uh, the longer they leave those discussions, uh, the longer it's unclear what happens. Now, someone like uh, Bezar Smith, Smotrich is uh, uh, really uh, saying that um, countries like Egypt should take uh, people from Gaza and that he would encourage voluntary immigration. And, of course, that would mean the reoccupation of Gaza. Now, when he says uh, that um, we could turn it from desert into a prosperous land, this is a sentiment we've been hearing ourselves from some of the Israelis, that one person said to me once, what do they want? We left Gaza in 2005, and it's because of Hamas that it stayed in a state of poverty. But if you look at the facts, it's actually the blockade, uh, uh, two decades of it almost, by the Israelis that have prevented uh, people in Gaza from leaving unless it's specifically uh, warranted for work to work the Israeli lands, those agricultural lands in those southern towns. Um, and also, the other thing is that they controlled everything from aid, they have done and they continue to do so, uh, from aid to water and food. Um, so this will play into clearly many opinions that, that uh, support uh, the Zionist movement, especially and including those far-right figures in that far-right government. All right, let's continue the discussion about what's happening across the region. We've got Mohammed Sharqawi with us here in the studio. Good to have you back with us. So let's start with the latest line coming out, the statement by Bezalel Smotrich saying Israelis will live in Gaza. Is he just saying out aloud what they're privately discussing in the cabinet for the post-war plans of Gaza? Well, it seems that the right-wing vision of the future is imposing itself on Netanyahu's strategy. That means this war is a preamble to recolonizing Gaza and putting it under the control of Israel, which is going to create a huge de-escalation in the region. Therefore, if the idea of uh, eradicating Hamas as a security threat to Israel is not fully satisfied by the Israelis. Now the right wing is saying, no, 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 we want more than that. So basically, uh, the Hamas factor becomes just a justification for you know, putting new or, or imposing new control over the, the strip. Therefore, uh, I think there is a grandiose plan among the right wing in, in Israel in comparison to what Netanyahu has verbalized in his last speech. Well, he talks about encouraging the residents of Gaza to emigrate. But let's be honest here, this is not encouragement when, according to reports, more than 70 percent, if you destroy more than 70 percent of Gaza's buildings, 
critical infrastructure, water, electricity, that's, that's a lot more than just encouragement, isn't it? That's making the place uninhabitable. We need to apply critical discourse analysis and scrutinize these phrases. Basically, it boils down to, number one, depopulation of Gaza. That means triggering all possible reasons that life becomes unbearable and not only the infrastructure, but also the security threat among Gazans grows to the maximum. Therefore, there are two options. Either Israel pushes those two plus million Gazans toward Sinai or other place or other region. Number two is also considering that Gaza becomes a source of uh, migration and then the, the Mediterranean becomes a passage from Gaza to other places, either in North Africa, in the Middle East, and be, or Europe. So in the long run, there is a possibility that, that Netanyahu will play the migration card to, you know, push or to put more pressure on the Europeans to provide him with what he needs to maintain this war. And by the way, we should also take into consideration that his speech yesterday was significant when he said the war will continue for many more months. So this is going to be an extra protractedness of the conflict. All right. Thank you so much, Mohammed Sharqawi.